Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do knotless braids on short, natural 4C hair. First thing you want to do is start off by moisturizing the hair using your favorite moisturizer. Today we're using shea butter. You want to make sure that that moisturizer is distributed throughout all the strands of the hair. Next, you want to make sure that you lightly blow dry the hair just to stretch it out a little bit and make it easier for us to have clean parting and easy, an easy time braiding the hair. The hair we'll be using today is Expression Pre-Stretched Hair. And I'm telling you guys this now, try and find pre-stretched hair that will save you guys so much more time. And the color we're using today is color number four, which is like a brown, a natural brown color. This is how the hair looks straight out of the packet. We will only be using one additional hair product and that's Murray's Edge Wax, which is very crucial for neat and clean parting. So let's get right into it. So what I'm doing here is just parting the hair from ear to ear. And what I like to do is take a little bit of the edge wax and lay that right across the parting. Then what I'll do is go back in with the rat tail comb and just perfect the parting a little bit more. And using the edge wax helps the parting to be as neat and as clean as possible and ensures that all the flyaway hairs are in place and not in the way of your parting. Clip away all the hair that I'm not manipulating. Also here you can see that I'm very careful with my parting and I will go ahead and take some more of that edge wax and put that on the hairs so that they're going in the direction that I need them to go in. You also just want to detangle that section of hair, make sure that it has no tangles, no knots, and then we're going to clip away the hair that we are not using right now. Now we can begin the braid. So what you'll do is you'll start the braid with three sections. And you cross over once, twice, and once more. This is when you're going to feed in a piece of the expression hair. Using your pinky is going to help you place the hair in between your index finger and your thumb. Then you're going to release that hair that was anchored by your pinky and continue braiding. Cross over once, cross over twice, and then you're going to release that hair, bring it back down, and feed in another piece of hair. Using your pinky again, wrap it around, put the hair in between your index and your thumb finger, place that hair above, And then you continue braiding, cross over once, cross over twice, and bring that piece of hair back down. So you wanna continue to feed in the hair until you get your desired length and size of the braid. The more hair you add, the longer the braid is gonna be. And the sections that you are adding to the braid, the bigger they are, the bigger your braid is gonna be. The smaller they are, the smaller your braid is gonna be. So use your judgment about how much air, hair you're adding and when you're adding at a time. And the more you start to do these braids, the more you'll understand how much um, hair you're gonna need. Another important thing to know about doing these braids is that the client's hair is naturally going to want to stick out of the braid so it's up to you to use your fingers to push their hair underneath the braiding hair i don't know if that makes sense but if you watch how i'm braiding i'm pushing her natural hair underneath the expression hair so that it's not sticking out I'll show you in more detail in another clip when we can get closer up to the braid just so you can see how I'm pushing the natural hair behind the, the braid. And sometimes you are going to need some extra help with that so you can definitely use your Murray's Edge Wax to help lay the hairs down and just to ensure that the natural hair is inside of the braid and it's not sticking out. When doing knotless braids, if your client has experience working with uh, braiding hair, the most efficient way to get it done is probably to have them pass the hair to you. 
if not you can also buy uh those the wooden thread holder racks um you can find those on amazon for like 15 dollars and you would just uh pre-section the hair and put those sections of hair on the wooden rack and then you'll just pick as you go so that could help you save time too so at this part i obviously have it sped up but i really do want to encourage you guys to take your time with the parting the parting is almost one of the most important things about knotless braids um don't be afraid to go over that part multiple times and use the edge wax to help you get that clean and crisp like perfect parting okay brought you guys in a little bit closer so here we have our section ready and we're gonna part into three sections cross over one two three time to feed in the hair going to feed it in there lift that side up cross over one two bring that hair down and you're gonna feed in another piece feed lift up cross over one two bring down feed in another piece of hair feed in lift up cross over one two and bring down that piece of hair from here i like to change from overhand braiding to underhand braiding it's just an, it's just easier for me that's up to your preference and you just keep fitting in the hair the same way you would lift that piece up cross over one bring the hair down and you continue your braid and as you can see here i'm just making sure that her natural hair is laid um, there was a little bump in the road there so I just combed that down and I'm going to feed in another piece of hair feed in lift up cross over one bring down and cross over again and you're just gonna continue braiding down also here you can see what I was talking about previously about the natural hair wanting to naturally stick out of the braid but I am pushing that natural hair backwards into the braid so that it's not sticking up out of the braid. With this next braid i'm showing you another little tip when working with uh, natural 4c hair sometimes the ends of the hair are not going to be as straight as you want them to be so just take a little bit of that edge wax and you can apply that to the ends of the hair so that it's easy to manipulate her hair when braiding and it's gonna be easy to push that hair back into the braid and not have it sticking out or making the braid look uh, uneven or anything like that
So here we finally come to the end of the braiding and what you want to do is just trim all of your braids and cut all the flyaway hairs. Then you're going to take some boiling water and you want to dip your ends in the boiling hot water. And what you see me doing here is moving the cup of hot water back and forth in between the braids because you don't want to just stick the braids in there and have them all crumpled up at the bottom of the cup because then you're going to have crinkled braids and they're not going to have the ends will not be straight so make sure you're just doing that up and down motion so that the braids are staying pretty much straight throughout the whole dipping process and you want to be careful with this because water is boiling hot so make sure you have a towel with you and if you want you can have an extra towel around your client's uh, neck just to make sure that the steam is not burning him or her so just in case you didn't know, the purpose of the hot water is to seal the ends of the braids. This way you won't have any unraveling of your braids and it also just helps the braids look neat at the ends, clean and finished. It's After dipping all the braids in hot water, I like to go back in with my scissors and just taper it off just a little bit more to make sure the ends are neat and look nicely cut and you don't want to do a blunt cut unless that's the look your client is going for but I like to taper the ends so just carefully take your scissors if you have a razor that's even better and you can just trim those ends a little bit and then you want to dip them back in hot water once more just to seal that Now some final touches, I like to add hair mousse to the braids 
and hair mousse just helps also with sealing of the braids and making sure the style looks nice and neat so you can be very generous with the hair mousse and distribute that throughout the braids it's OVA the creator Now I'm bringing you guys in just a little bit closer so I can show you how I laid the edges. And today we're going to be using Gorilla Snot. And I like to take a clean toothbrush, brush out her edges, then apply a little bit of the Gorilla Snot onto the toothbrush. And then I'm just going to start moving her edges in a semi-circular motion. As you can see here, it's just really a freehand type of thing. And up to your client's preference whether or not they want a lot of edges out or a little bit some people like more some people like less and right here i'll just show you again more towards the side that we only use a little bit gorilla snot a little goes a long way so you just need a tiny bit swoop those edges I also like to lay the sideburns just to give a completely finished look and here on the other side you can see we do the same exact thing. Just play with the edges, use your fingers to help you mold the shape that you want. And you just push her hair right back into the braid. So we have made it to the end guys. Hopefully this has helped you guys a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will be sure to insert some pictures so you can see how she styled her braids. Thanks guys. Bye. It's OVA.